Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. You have to go over that close. Go back. Yeah, I am. Right, this is the last video of the bits and pieces. So, after this is done, there'll be one more video, which is basically getting the exhaust fitted at the back, um, roadworthy, that sort of thing. So, we should be ready to drive up. Just got to get tyres as well. So, this stage is pretty much complete, but this is how we did it. Okay. 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 Do you want to be in this? No. Why? Okay. Why? No, I don't want to. Okay, cool. <laughs> Do I turn it off? Yeah. <laughs> I decided to paint this rear Venetian. They're very, very rare on the 2480. A lot of people have uh, expressed the fact that they'd like to get this one, hold of this one. Um, so I've painted that at the same time as the wheels. There's five there, including the spare, obviously. Um, so I've painted those, ready for tyres. And I'm going to turn my attention to this parcel tray. Now, this parcel tray's been cut for speakers. And you can see, it's not all that good. Uh, it's lost a lot of structure around here. So I'm going to use this as a template and make a new one. Now, speakers in parcel trays, scream alarm bells. What's particularly bad, and this was about to happen, they've actually marked out where they're going to cut the speaker. And there's a hole there, I don't know what that's for. And here, you can see they've actually tried. Now I reckon they've given up uh, because it's too hard to cut with the window in. Um, but this is bad. If these were cut out, it's immediately not roadworthy because you're cutting into the structure of the car. Now, fortunately the chap that had this car gave up on the idea and put those 1980 speakers in that I was bagging in the first video. It's actually a really good thing that they did. Now this is a hard color to get, um, so I'm gonna reuse this piece. It's stretched in a couple of spots, but it doesn't matter. I'll make up a new parcel tray and I'll staple this from behind, give it a good clean. You shouldn't see any difference. All right, so I've cut out a, a new piece of masonite using the old parcel tray as a template. This has got a lot more body. It's a bit thicker than the other one. Now, the other one had soundproofing or body had um, that carpet underlay underneath it. I'm not going to worry about this. It might become too thick doing that. I'm just going to start by tacking it in. It's important with this to keep an eye on what you're doing on the other side and stretch it. Just keep having a look. And that's nice and taut. That's good. So I'm going to try and pull it out that way um, as well to try and make these stretchy marks where the other speakers were and the external ones were sitting on top, try and make them disappear a bit. And you can see there, that's really neat. And that's stretching, there's a tiny bit of stretching there but I can clean all that off. These can be really tight to put on these shackle bushes, they're for the rear. Let's take these nuts off. Um, good idea, make sure you clean up all the surfaces that the bushes are going to slide onto. Um, with brakes, whether it be uh, wheel cylinders, masters or anything like that you're playing with, um, the rubber grease you get is the PBR stuff, it's proper brake stuff. You can also use a, a very light smear, it sort of feels like runny jam, um, just to put over, yeah, that's a bit more. just to put over here, you don't want too much of it because you don't want the bush sliding around too much, it just helps you get it on. Oh, how you feeling Herbie? I'm just going to try and feed these through, I'll feed it through from the back, just push it in. Well, the rear axle's all in and fitted up. I've just got to back the handbrake off so I can get that clevis pin on that side. Here's anybody. Are you going to have your cake? If not, I'll eat it. Well, I don't know what do you think. Maybe leave me half. Looks pretty tasty. Why are you filming your cake? That's no nice. one's going to be interested in that other than me. <laughs> well, give me something to look at later. Great place to store the wheels until we're ready to fit tyres. Got to sort of clean under here and I'll just pressure pack that with a black spray can just to make the wheel arch look good with the blue over sprays. Someone once told me the best way to clean glass is Windex and screwed up newspaper. Not much point in putting in a rear venation if the um, glass is all dirty. So I'll clean the outside first. That way when I go to clean the inside I can see exactly how clean it really is. Well look at that. Coat of paint and a clean. Doesn't that look beautiful? Right, time to start doing a job I don't like doing much, that's universal joints. I'm going to put two new unis in this, um, and they're sort of clipped on from the back behind each one of these. So I'm just going to take these clips off. I've got a rag under there, I sort of hold it with my pinky while I knock it into the rag, because these are inclined to 
bounce off, which it just did. I'll try and push it anyway, see if I can dislodge it. Right, so the cap's come off, and it really actually looks pretty good in there. Now I've got that one out, I've got to push this through back this way to get this cap out, then I can withdraw the uni. But before I do, I'll just put a little bit of slip in there first, um, so it should withdraw a little bit easier. Okay, 5710. 5710, what's the journal diameter? 1462. Now I'm just going to punch a couple of little marks. Um, one. Let's put two little dots there. Oops. And two little dots there, and that way I can put it, the yoke back on here without getting it 180 degrees out of phase. Now, that probably doesn't matter on a shaft like this, but if you've got a skyline with a centre bearing or whatever, they can vibrate and carry on with a pork chop. I'm doing this, it's probably overkill. I'm not going to bother on the back because if it's out of phase when I put it on, and there is a vibration, we can just turn around 180 degrees on the, on the pinion. Well, we've got some rain in Melbourne today. It was absolutely pouring before. Let's take the last uh, uni out of that yoke. Um, these ones here are nowhere near as good as the ones on the back. In fact, if you can see this, there's a whole lot of chatter marks all through here. Um, now that should be dead smooth, I don't know if you can see that. All those rough marks. So the grease is overheated, they should be dead smooth, and they should rotate freely. This was actually binding like that as it was going, so that one is well and truly stuffed. The, the worst part about this, the good one was on the back, in fact that looks like it's been replaced, it doesn't look old at all. It's in really really good condition, plenty of grease and it's really really smooth. That one you could almost get away with putting it back, but I'm not going to bother buying a new one. Uh, this was on the front. Now, you don't want a uni brake on the front because the last thing you need is the tail shaft to drop down at the front and catapult the car. So we've got the parcel tray that fits underneath the dash with the wooden centre speaker. These parcel trays look absolutely terrible. All the finish is peeling off them. Um, and they're sort of torn in corners and they've, just, they've got holes in them. But I did have some, or a pair, in the A60, which I'm going to have to find some for that. Now this stuff. Let me think about this stuff. This stuff's great. If your kids are annoying you and they're trying to get your attention all the time, which is really sweet with kids, but if they are doing it, you can put a bit of this in the palm of their hand, rub it in, and when it dries, it takes them hours to peel it off. Totally harmless. They use this stuff watered down with uh, paper mache. But if you want some peace and quiet, that's how you can do it. And the flax aid in the, in the primer that I've made is uh, or prepared is going to serve these well. Now these things are really rough and ready. Um, I'm a bit desperate because I can't get other ones from the chook shed, so I'm sort of stuck with using ones that I had. Um, of course, the original ones on the car were shot to pieces. Now, this is going to be really unorthodox because what I'm going to do, they're fairly close to the original colour they're meant to be, and it's just in primer, so I'm going to clear coat these. I don't want them shiny, but I want them so that if anything spills, they can be wiped out. Primer's uh, porous, and all I wanted was a, a pale grey. Um, it's probably a little bit darker than original, but a bit of clear coat on there, and I reckon we're good. <laughs> and there you go. Probably the dodgiest and most uh, unorthodox bit of paint and paint you've ever seen, but I think for the um, for what I wanted, this will do fine. There's clear coat there. I'll put flex aid in the clear coat, flex aid in the prime, so it should be able to move around without cracking and so forth. The condition of these things isn't perfect anyway, uh, but you know what? They'll do the trick. It looks like a nice day today. But um, summer's definitely over, we're into autumn, um, which means my um, spray painting time's come to a close. Spare wheel's finally done, it looks absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to get the other four tyres. Alright, ready to start putting this front uni in. I've resurfaced this, uh, yeah, the, the slip joint here. Um, important when you put these in, you don't want to put them in dry because you can damage the seal. The best thing to use is Snow White Petroleum Jelly because that won't affect the clutches or bands in the transmission. You can't use normal grease. So I've decided to clean that up. It's easier off the tail shaft um, than it is when you put it on. I'm just going to put a slight bit of grease in here just so I can put these cups in nice and easily. Now when you go in to buy these uni joints these are 1786s, I think, AUJ 1786s. If you go into a part supply and ask for a uni joint for an Austin Freo, a Wosley 2480, the guy's going to look at you like you've just smoked a few bongs. So you need to say it's for an XM Falcon or something like that. The rear one's different though, the rear one you really do need the right part. We've got to sort of put them in, end by end, if you know what I mean. So, like that. We have to sort of press these cups in. You've got to be really careful when you do this. That it's all centralized properly. I'm just going to do it in a vice. 
and they should go in. Just make sure they always nice and you know free. This stays free as you press them in. This one here is in, so now it's time to put these uh, little clips in and they retain it, these retaining clips, like that. And there we have it, that's still free, I can put this retainer in and then we're good to go. Nice and free, it has to be free, if it's binding it's no good. These marks here line up, that way I've got it in the same phase, if you know what I mean, the same as when I pulled it apart. But that's sort of there. When I was little, my favourite meal was roast lamb, and I used to eat all my veggies first and, and save the best part till last, and I still do that as an adult. Uh, but on cars, I always start with stuff I like doing, and leave this stuff till last. And really, working on front ends is just a shit job. I like to rebuild them on the bench, so I know which way is the top so I can get these lines around the right way. Um, I'll put them on as a unit. It's much easier working a couple of 5 16 bolts and nuts through here, clamping them in a vise and sort of stretching the, the shoes over. Um, these are rebuilt cylinders I've, I've done. These are the rebonded shoes. Um, this is off the other side, so this can just go bang straight back on when it's finished. It's actually quite scary when you look in here. It's so neglected. There's build-ups of um, muck everywhere. Just to get to bolts and nuts, you sort of have to scrape it off. Um, absolutely neglected. Oh, yuck. Look at that. What a mess. There's a heap of stored energy here. I hate mucking around with springs. And I'm going to put a jack underneath the bottom of the spring saddle. Um, jack it up to get the pressure off these, um, off the shock absorber. And I need to uh, undo these bolts here. And these can be a notorious pain in the neck to get these ones off. When you jack them up, you've got to make sure that the lip on the side of the trolley jack there goes under the side there and the reason for that is because if you get it under here the spring can the energy from the spring can push down and push the jack open of course that's a really really dangerous thing so you want to lock it by having the protruded part of the jack table um, on this side of the spring saddle can get this split pin out. Yeah, these can be a real problem these can rust in on these steel ends of the, the steel inner part of these bushes don't do this at home. I can't get that bolt out, so I'm going to press it out at work. So I'm just going to drop the spring. There we go. What a terrible job. So I'll take those control arms, I'll split it all on the bench and I'll press that out. It's just easier. It looks messy doing it that way. It's unconventional, but at least it'll work. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm putting these lock cylinders in and got all these clips and clamps and things and I can't remember how I took it out because they were apart for quite a while. A couple of uh, front end components. The shock absorber looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. Um, there were no leaks in it. Um, the, the oil probably needs a top up, I might change the oil in there, I'll give them a paint job but I reckon I can reuse those. Um, this is the kingpin arrangement, basically just a long pin and they, there's a couple of bushes in here and there's another one there, that stuff all comes out but that's sort of still clogged up with road gunk from the 60s I would assume but when these fit in they sort of fit like that there's your steering stops there and if you can feel any movement there's a tiny bit of movement there now that doesn't feel bad now you have to be careful with these things they're quite complicated um, this is one of the lower control arms here there's another one that's still in the car I haven't taken off yet and there's the spring saddle that holds the big coil spring on now the bottom of these kingpins have a fulcrum through them, a swivel, um, which goes through and allows the kingpin to swivel as the thing's going up and down. Now, um, th this is hard mounted inside here with a cotter pin, and it's like the uh, cotter pin you'd find on the crank of a bicycle. Now these then fit through here and they have these um, cups, if you like. Now they can't be tightened all the way up or the thing won't swivel, so they have to be... Um, they have to be sort of tightened to a predetermined amount. Now, these are held in by different cotter pins again, which are sort of scalloped out, um, which sit in that little rebate there. Now, it's very important when you take these off. You loosen these bolts and these will become slack and you can withdraw them. Um, but this one here actually has to be withdrawn altogether because the fulcrum has 
an actual chamfer through it or a rebated section through it which locks it in. The weather's crap so it's time to be inside. It's hard to make Woolsey videos when we're inside. What's it like being outside because it's warm in here? Oh, that's so nice. Took a zicky from work today. I should be there. Um, and I'm feeling a bit knackered, but I can do sort of bits and pieces in here. With these hubs, I've actually blown compressed air through where the grease nipples put um, or deposit the grease just to get rid of any dirty crap there. It's an O-ring here. It sits down the bottom. And then we've got to put this sort of dust sleeve. This thing was seized solid. Air space to slide nice and easily, and that slides in and locks itself there. Always blow compressed air through the bottom here so I can come out the side, make sure there's no dirty crap there. Blow ring. There we go. It's also worth noting that these are scalloped, the kingpins are scalloped, and that scallop shows through here. I don't know if you can see that and the bush goes into the scallop, so that has to be the right way around. Now the grease I've got is molly grease. Oh, here we go, all at the top there, that's beautiful. Okay, beautiful. So this kingpin setup, in my opinion, is looking pretty good. Um, there's no movement in there. I'll be able to tell once and for all once it's matted in the car and it's all looking good. Uh, one thing that does worry me a little bit is this fulcrum at the bottom. It sort of fits in here with a, a, a cotter pin. And they do wear on the, on the threads and that's quite loose there. The other side was a lot better so I've bought two new ones. Uh, well, two, two new ends and a new pin itself. And that's lovely and tight. There's no movement there obviously because it's new. Uh, and in fitting that, I can sort of secure it home with a new cotter pin. I don't know how to get it in. I think it goes in that way. There's a pin that lines up, so... so it's got to be this... Oh, there it is. Hang on. I just want to see if I can get that pin in. But the problem was... Like, I had to take it apart to get them coded, right, because the key wouldn't fit. And they were all gummed up and crap. Now that's locked, so I've got a key in there. That's open. I've got it. Ha! Who's your daddy? You what? How dandy is that? Quite dandy. Quite dandy. And as dandy as a dandelion. Goodbye! When I first looked at this um, lower control on bushes, they looked alright. Um, you know, for the most part, they sort of looked like this. Uh, but then, of course, the more I investigated, the more I found that they were actually shot. Now the problem with these, these are uh, the steel inner type one, is the steel inner tends to, to rust on the shaft there. This is being a stubborn pain in the neck. I'm going to take this whole lower control arm pin out. Hopefully it all comes out as one. I've never taken one of these off before. What's involved? Here we go. Clean that up. Well that really was a bit of an ordeal. I've had to cut diagonally with the Dremel into there and knock it off with the cold chisel. Just got to make sure you don't cut too far because you don't want to cut into this surface here. So I'll clean all that up with wet and dry. Well, pumped up on antibiotics, but I'm feeling a bit better. Just been to the chook shed and got a new door trim. So I can start putting the interior back together. This trim for the um, in front of the fuel tank in the boot. Uh, thank you to wonderful Richard, the proper shocker oil. So I can top the shocks up and start putting the front suspension back together. And thanks to another friend at the club, David. Two coated locks, so I've put all the door handles back in, door trims on now, interior is pretty much done. A bumper bolt, because I've got one over the other side that's a normal hex head that looks like a Frankenstein car. So, I'm pretty happy. We can move on with this. Sun's out, chook shed day, absolutely wrapped. Tell you what, in my time I've seen an awful lot of dickheads in car clubs. People trying to exert their authority and make themselves feel important. But there's no one like that in the car club I'm in. I'm in the Walsley Car Club in Victoria. They're just all normal, well-adjusted people with a common interest. Just the way a car club should be. Give this a bit of paint. You could call that a rust preventative or moisture will go under there and it'll cause more rust, but whatever the case. 
Right, so we've put this uh, lower control arm pin in. Um, I've used new mounting hardware. I always engrave these things so I can put them back in the right spot. Uh, they're all identical. I don't think you gain anything through doing that. I just like to put things back where I find them. RHR, right and rear. Goes on that side at the back. Um, then once I've fitted, I can just blow over there with a the spray can. It's okay. I need your help in a minute, though. I'm just going to temporarily throw that to hang it there, and I can put these end caps on. So I'm getting this all a pre preliminary tighten, but I'm not going to sort of set everything up yet until I've got the spring saddles tightened, the spring in. Then I can sort of go around tighten them. They'll put split pins in and set these up down here, these fulcrum nuts, um, and tighten up the cotter pins and all that sort of stuff. So I've got to wait until it's all sorted together before I can finalise how it's set up. I've got to tighten up that drag link over there. Try and put some long bolts through there to hold it while I jump it up. But so far, so good. Alright, so there's no stress on the spring at the moment. I've put these long uh, bolts through to hold the spring saddle. I can sort of jack it up from different parts then to sort of um, get it onto this this sort of angle here to put the original bolts in and tighten them up. So I'm gun shy of doing this sort of thing. I don't like doing it at all, but there's no other way of doing it. I should really be using threaded section really. That really was a pain in the neck and an ordeal to say the least. I'm gonna stick these things in now. Um, this top pin and two new bushes. So it's got to sort of go in here. The only issue I've got now is I've got to do the other side. Right here, yeah, we stuck the brakes on, put the line on tomorrow, up to here, uh, and the steering arm, then that side's pretty much done. Before we uh, put it back on the ground with new tyres, go right over with the spanner, check everything's nice and tight, grease it up, and we should be good to go. Right, so the front end's all together, kingpins done, all the new lines, uh, mounting hardware, new shoes, wheel cylinders, all the rest of it. Looking underneath, the front end's been rebushed. Um, it's all looking pretty good under there as well. Um, looking further rearward, uh, new exhaust system, new brake lines, rear axles in too. I'm eating biscuits, I'm hungry. Now it's time to bleed the brakes. Just up and down, very slowly down. Up. Alright, I'm just going to lock this off. Now push down, hold it down. Just have a rest there for a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get the air out of every corner and then I'll do a final bleed. Pump it up. Hold it down. Pump it up. Hold it down. How's the pedal? It's good. Is it, is it staying up high? Yeah, very high. Very high. So the car is looking pretty good now. So basically, after this, there's one more video, and all we need to do is get uh, new tyres, fit them, go and get a uh, permit from Vic Roads, go to the exhaust place, get the tailpipe sorted out, then go off to the roadworthy place, get a roadworthy, and we'll have to also uh, repair anything that the roadworthy bloke finds as well. But otherwise, I must say, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Righto then, see you later.